to my channel and for those of you who are first timers here that means you didn't watch the first episode of my broadcast journey i think you should actually go and watch it it's a journey so i'd like you to follow me from the very beginning in the very beginning of episode one i told you about how i landed my my job miraculously and i'm not going to tell the story again go on go to episode one i'll wait trust me all right for those who have been watching or who have watched episode one Thank you so much. I hope you found the story interesting. I told you about how I landed my job and then of course I started as an intern. And I think it's important if you're going to go into broadcasting that you start from the very, very beginning. Learn the basics because I know lots of people who want to just get on radio. I see lots of interns come here and their only concern is getting to the studio and you know, just talking on air and it doesn't work that way. I mean, as an intern, I worked in um, traffic department production department, I worked in social media and I think it's important to feel around the radio station because broadcasters today aren't people who can just talk. You must be able to do lots of things like edit your videos, edit your audios, the source for news, you must be able to uh, be a marketer if you need to, you know, create content for social media. And also another table I'd like to share is a table where line managers turn interns to errand boys and girls. Now I have no problem with interns running errands, even at my stage I run errands for my colleagues. My colleagues want to buy something, there's absolutely nothing wrong with me running errands for them. But my problem is that most of the time in Nigeria, in this part of the world, interns are seen as people you only send on errands. You find that an intern at the end of one year cannot even do anything. You know, after working in a radio station, cannot you know, edit, cannot talk, cannot, cannot do anything basically because they send all of their internship running errands. Like I said, there's absolutely nothing wrong with running errands, but I think that line managers must begin to do better. I know that as an intern myself or as a copper then, my superiors tried it and they will try it. And I think that even as an intern yourself, you must carry yourself with grace and you must you must ensure that you position yourself in a way that you seem like you're here to work. Not that you're just I do pressing phone. So if you're just I do and pressing phone, who will find work for you? Go and buy a mala. Go and buy something. That's what you want to do here. Don't worry, we'll waste your time together. But as an intern, you must come, have a list of things you want to learn, you know, find the right mentors in the radio station, and just, you know, do the way you look, when you look committed and you seem committed and you're ready to work, no one's going to be sending you to go and buy pure water only. I mean, I'm just saying. And like I said, there's absolutely nothing wrong with, you know, running errands. But if that's all you do as an intern, there's no problem. So anyway, like I said, as an intern, first of all, I worked in production. Well, where I learned to edit, use software to edit, I did a lot of voiceovers. Then also I worked in traffic department, which is the department that's actually responsible for shelling adverts. I think that was very helpful, even though I'm not working in traffic, but I think that it allowed me to sort of know what actually that a radio station doesn't just consist of a studio and the presenters. There's a whole lot more that happens behind the scene. If you're going to be a broadcaster, you must know about what's happening in engineering, what's happening in traffic, what's happening in, in news department, what's happening in social media, what's happening in accounts, wherever, you must be able to feel around. So if you're going to be an intern, don't just decide that, oh, all I want to do is to be an OAP and you don't care about what happens in all the other departments. And I'm very, very privileged. I'm very happy that I was able to, you know, experience uh, all of the different departments as an intern, as a popper. Oh, I started off also scheduling music. I remember that back in the day, we used to get the CDs, uh, Urban Express, Pop Express, and my job really, was to get these CDs and you know um, and uh, burn them on the computer and tag them and then send them. So I kind of worked in the library as well. I had to tag them. It had to be meticulously done, you know. And and for me, it was it was it was important. I'm I'm glad that I went through that stage. Also, I find that a lot of interns also come to the station with an attitude. You know how it is where you know a football critic always knows where Ronaldo should have passed the ball. Always knows where ah, Messi. Ah, how could you? Ah, you didn't you didn't but give them a ball even you know they don't know where the goalpost is same thing with a lot of interns that come with this attitude of you know what i've arrived yeah i'm here all of this but they don't even know what they're doing and then you turn on the mic for them then they realize oh my days this is actually work you know talking on radio being a broadcaster is beyond just talking you know there's a lot that goes into that and i think that as an intern is where you learn those things where you learn to script where you learn to you know go through a school where you learn to do research even if it's for, for just a five minute program you learn all of those things so please do not despise the days of internship because for me those are the foundational years that i feel i mean when people wake me you can wake me up now and i can run the show 
you know but that's only because I mean I have the foundation in place so for me being an intern was an interesting journey uh, being an interest was humbling yes um, being an intern was learning I remember going to the studio and watching some of the people you know who were you know broadcasters at the time and just staying in the studio and just watching them even though yes I had my moments of what are these ones doing <laughs> come on give me the mic let me show them and you know getting on the mic and getting you know my own show helped me realize that hey you can be arrogant you can think you can do it but it's a different ball game when you're actually given the opportunity to do it because then I got on radio and I realized quite a few things that I needed to correct. For example, I was this JJC who had just moved back from the UK. An intern, you know, working on radio in Ibadan is a different thing. Because then I had to pronounce things and I was mispronouncing people's name. I remember the name I was supposed to, the time I was supposed to say, um, someone was from Bode. There's a place in Bode, you know, called Bode in Ibadan. I said, oh, the person is from Bode. And, ah, oh my God. And I remember murdering people's names. When you're in Ibadan, <laughs> You cannot come and be calling uh, Fakounda with absent, accent. You better call that name correctly. And that's also part of being an intern. Whatever location you're at, you must learn the culture. And you cannot say, this is where I'm from. I'm from the UK. And, you know, I'm just here to school you guys. No, you've got to learn to adapt to that culture. You've got to learn to speak the language. I have not fluent, but at least they may be able to pronounce things appropriately as they, you know, should be pronounced. Those are the things I learned that as an intern that today when I read the news and I'm able to pronounce certain names, I'm like, you know what, I paid my dues, I paid my dues, you know, so being an intern as well, I mean, a lot of people, I mean, came down on me for mispronouncing things, mispronouncing names, I had to slow down, I was told I was too fast, as I'm sure, I still am sometimes, but I've learned how to, you know, slow down sometimes so that the people who are, I mean, this is because this video, on radio is a different ball game because if you're too fast on radio, people cannot read your lips. I can afford to do that here because the video, you know, but on radio, you learn that you've got to slow it down, you know, so you can't come with your G, you know, IJGB accent and come and just bamboozle everybody. People are like, what's this one? I beg, I beg. So yeah, being an intern is, is, it's important. It's an important part of your journey if you want to be a, a, a successful broadcaster. Being an, a successful anything. Being an intern is a huge part. That's where you learn like a child to learn to walk, to write, to do things properly. Because if you if you learn the bad habits as an intern, oh, it's gonna be hard. So next time, I will tell you a bit more, the next phase of my journey on radio, which is when I started working on the morning show. I also tell you some some never before heard things about my journey already so stay tuned to this channel uh, to follow this journey I hope that you find it interesting and uh, enlightening and informative <laughs> thank you for following my name is Runke Giwa Onofua enjoy